If you've been putting off learning that new skill, or if you've put some projects on hold because you haven't quite developed the skill that you want to learn, but haven't taken the time to learn it, then this video is for you. Welcome back to the Plamo Therapist Podcast. Today, I want to talk about a phenomenon that I've seen occur in several buildings, and it's something that I've kind of experienced myself. And so I figured I'd talk about it and how you know, we can kind of move through this sort of issue. And so if you've been building for a while and you've been honing your skills, maybe this is something that you've experienced or something that you're currently going through. But if you're a newer builder, this may not be as applicable to you, but something you can kind of keep in the back pocket should this feeling occur. And so I'll kind of lay the foundation in a story for you where as you kind of grow along and you get become more comfortable, maybe you decide you want to plan a kit and you want to do something that's maybe a cool kit, but you have an idea where you want to add a new skill to it. And then as you start to work on this project, as you start to incorporate that new skill, you realize that like, oh, it's it's, it's not looking so great or the skill you're working on and it's just like, man, this, this kind of sucks. I don't like it. It's not coming out as well as I thought. And so when that happens, you kind of just put it off to the side and you decide to come back to it and you're just kind of like, um, I don't want to work on it. And you put it off and you kind of don't come back to learning that skill. Or maybe you come back and you're just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to learn it then you start to plateau and you start to feel like there's nothing more for you to do in this hobby. And eventually you kind of start to just fizzle out because you're just like, I, I feel like I've hit my peak. And so this idea of hitting this wall and then either not addressing it or kind of slowly fading out of the hobby is something that I call perceived regression paralysis. And it's something that I want to talk about how it, what it is and how it occurs, why it's more prevalent in veteran builders as opposed to newer builders and why it causes them to burn out. And then three, how can we overcome it should we experience it? So diving right into it, what is perceived regression paralysis and how does it occur? Perceived regression paralysis is the condition where a builder delays or completely avoids a project out of fear of failure or messing up. So that is our perceived regression paralysis. And often it is a builder, often it occurs in a builder who's already done a number of kits and has developed a lot of skills, but wants to add something new to the repertoire as they continue to grow in this hobby space. But the thing is, as they start to develop this skill, as they start to work on this new strategy, this technique they want to do, they encounter a difficulty like of this learning this new skill that they haven't really encountered in a long time. Like the last time they really had a struggle with something was probably a long time ago when they first started to learn to do skills. And so it's something they haven't quite experienced in a while. And the sudden shock in this realization is that like, oh, this one skill isn't as good as I had expected it to be, even though I've never worked on it, because they're kind of relying on their other skills to kind of compensate for it. Meaning they think, oh, if I'm good at this, then this means I should also be good at this. And so this sort of dichotomy that occurs kind of creates a kind of like this weird break in their minds of just like, wait a minute, I'm not as good as I thought I was. What What's going on here? And so as they kind of focus in on this new skill that they're not as good at, that's the only thing that they can see. And they feel like in their mind, they're getting worse. They're like, oh my God, this sucks. I suck. And they don't know what to do it. And they kind of just either kind of stop because they're afraid of kind of adjust, of kind of adjusting, adjusting and addressing that sort of fear. And they either stop because they don't want to confirm this belief. They either procrastinate because it's like, if I don't ever get to it, I can't ever confirm it. Or they slowly just kind of fizzle out of the hobby because just kind of like, you know what, that's just not for me. I don't want to deal with that feeling anymore. And so that's kind of really what happens with, with the perceived regression paralysis which is where the builder thinks that they're getting worse, the perceived part, the regression, the part getting worse and the paralysis, which is the idea that like, well, if I don't address it, it's not a problem. And they either don't learn that new skill or like I said, they plateau and they start to just kind of fizzle out because they feel like there's nothing more for them in this hobby. So now that we kind of understand it, the question now becomes, why does it become more prevalent in intermediate to advanced builders as opposed to beginner builders? Well, the reason this starts to happen is because for intermediate and advanced builders, we see what's called a disparity in the skills, meaning the veteran builder who has honed several different skills across many different kits, they see that this new skill isn't as good as their old skills. So the disparity is like, if I were to put it on a report card is like building the model kits, a plus painting, a plus weathering a minus, but then they come down to creating new custom decals or creating new custom parts F. And so what happens is when they see that F that disparity gets put on literally put on a spotlight. It's a, it's, we just focus and dial in on that one skill. And we're just so focused that it's not as good as the others. And so 
This focus on this underdeveloped area creates this dissonance where we believe we should be better, but we're not. And in order to cope with it, we start to disassociate or we try to avoid it, or maybe we just kind of put it out of our minds and never come back to it and never address it. Right. And then when we do kind of come back to the hobby, this issue that we never address, this issue that we've never kind of talked about or addressed kind of just lingers over our hobby space, kind of making it feel not as comfortable as we want to be. And the reason this doesn't affect our newer beginners or our beginner builders is because the disparity between the skills isn't as big, meaning if I were to use the same report card example, if a new builder is building model kits, D plus, um, painting, D minus, weathering, C, but then they get to uh, creating custom parts or pieces, F. The disparity doesn't look as big. And so in their minds, you know, there's not one thing to pinpoint that's really bad. They're just kind of like, it's all kind of junk, but I'm learning and I'm getting better. And that that sort of um, naivety is sort of like a shield against this sort of focus in on this one underdeveloped skill. And you kind of block yourself from really addressing it because it's like, hey, I know I suck because I'm still new. And so beginner builders don't get this feeling because they just like, they just kind of take it and they just kind of incorporate this new skill with all of their other underdeveloped skills. and They can all grow together and so that's how beginner builders don't really experience this paralysis all that much because they're not focusing in on this negative feeling of i should be better because they have no expectations of where they should be because they're still new so how do we overcome this paralysis if we've been building for a while and we feel this thing how can we overcome it well first thing we got to do is we got to accept that we're going to suck for a little while you know if we haven't worked on it we're not going to be good at it and so the only way we can get better is if we take some time to work on those skills which brings me to number two be intentional about developing that skill take some time to pick a kit out maybe an entry grade or something cheaper or a cheaper high grade and say i am going to try this skill that i want to learn on this kit and regardless of what happens i'm going to continue to work on it which brings me to point three which is perseverance as we set ourselves to be intentional intentional about our growth we need to make sure that we hold ourselves accountable to meeting that growth we make sure that we force ourselves through that uncomfortableness of learning that new skill force ourselves to work through that idea of this sucks i'm not good at it but i can't get good at it unless i do it so we push ourselves push yourself to work on that skill and continue to make growth and as long as you continue to push yourself and as long as you continue to force yourself to get it done, you can learn from it and then take that and apply it to your next kit. And as you start to do those things, we start to see that we make that progress. You know, it's not as good as we initially thought, right? But it's getting closer to our vision. And eventually you'll get to the point where what you can think of in your head actually matches what you're able to do. And now you're able to incorporate this new skill in all of your builds going forward. So what does all this mean? How does all this important? Well, we want to remember that when we're working in our hobby space, that everything in this space is within our control. That includes our thoughts and our feelings as well. If we feel stress or if we feel any sort of negativity in our hobby space, it's important we address it and not let it linger over our hobby space, because if we let that feeling linger, then it's going to infect it and it's slowly going to grow. And so if you're serious about learning that new skill, it's important that you take some time to address the feelings and make sure that you are accepting that your skill is going to take some time to develop. You're intentional about making the practice and taking the time to get better and that you persevere to the end so you can learn and get that experience to get better. And if you do all of these things, there isn't anything that you can't get yourself to learn to get better. And there's nothing in this hobby that you can't eventually learn to do. And with that said, guys, I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hope you found some value in this video. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, go do what you love, and I'll see you in the next one.